It's Biz Takeouts TV, and we're at the 2014 Lurie's Expo at the Cape Town City Hall. We're going to go tap into the minds of some of the speakers from the Seminar of Creativity to see what makes them tick. Patrick Barron, who is the Executive Creative Director for McCann's Australia. Patrick, welcome to Biz Takeouts TV. It's great to be here. Thank you, Warren. And welcome to Cape Town, actually. Yeah, it's awesome. Having a great time. Okay, well, obviously McCann's Australia, you guys have done some amazing work in the last year. You've won some cans with fubbing and uh, uh, guilt trip. Guilt trips, dumb ways to die and things like that, yep. So you guys are doing some awesome work. What are you guys drinking at McCann's Australia? Um, yeah, you know, uh, vast quantities of alcohol, um, whatever drugs we can get. Um, I don't know, you know, we're, um, we're not really drinking anything. There's no formula, there's no secret, it's just... Um, taking, um, looking at our clients' business problems and their problems and just coming up with ideas that um, are right for that brief and that, um, you know, um, are original. And then also, on, on your CV, as, as you want to call it that, you, yeah. you've listed photography and art installations and all these things as, as, as projects you're involved in. Yeah. What inspires you professionally and, and personally? I guess, um, um, the world inspires you. You know, we're living. Uh, this is one of the great things about uh, the Luris is that um, uh, in our job, one day we're doing a, a commercial for a luxury car, and as we've seen in the Luris, you know, it, the next day you can be answering a brief where you're trying to prevent women from being raped, and you're trying to get school books into schools. So you get this incredible diversity of briefs. So you know, your job, if you work in advertising, and from what I've seen in uh, South Africa, your job is incredibly interesting because the world is incredibly interesting. And then what do you think are the, are the elements and the skills required to be a good ECD? I think to be a good ECD, um, well there's a lot of skills but you're ultimately a people manager and you're ultimately someone who um, can have a vision and you can, you have the ability to communicate or that vision to your client You've got to then be able to see it seamlessly through production. You've got to make sure that at the end of the day, um, your idea and your vision is brought to life. And that means that you have to be able to um, um, co uh, collaborate with filmmakers, with scientists, with um, uh, people who are technologists, uh, with artists, with musicians. Um, you, the diversity of people you have to work with is so broad that you have to be able to communicate to those people and bring those people together and then bring that vision to life. Because if any elements of that execution is weak, your idea will not be as strong. And, then, and as we said, um, obviously you've worked on Dumb Ways to Die and Fubbing, and you're actually in South Africa for the Luris and you're the jury chair for TV and radio commercials. Yeah. Um, so digital work, how do you integrate that when it comes to TV and radio? Well, I think now, um, if a commercial sits just within uh, paid media, then it is a commercial. But nothing really lives alone these days. You can't, it's rare that a TV commercial just sits on its own for its own sake. Um, there are examples of that, but, and, they, and they usually are very good. Um, but these days, most campaigns are integrated. Everything has to work together. Everything is online. TV, um, I guess, let's call it, um, a broadcast media um, will live on TV, but it can also live online. So the best ideas um, can do both, I believe. And yeah, you know, occasionally you'll see a piece of uh, a piece of communication that um, is purely for television, is designed purely for that media. But I think it's getting it's rarer and rarer that you see that. And then, second last question for you. What do you think are the, are the key elements and key points um, of moving a, a, a campaign from being a good campaign to a great campaign? The key element is always the idea. And um, for me, let's just say uh, it's great idea, great execution. I've always loved ideas that, um, that have that sense of humanity about them. So even when I'm judging, I will look at a piece and go, that's a great idea. That is brilliantly executed but then it leaves you with something as a person that, you know, it might make you laugh, it might make you cry, it may make you think about something you've never thought about before because of the way in which they reveal their message. And you suddenly thought, it's like seeing the world in a way you haven't seen it before. So um, if they, if an idea can do that to me as a person, then I, and it does, and it ticks all the other boxes, then I think that that's fantastic. That's what does it for me. Okay, I mean, looking more closely at Dumb Ways to Die, um, how did you ever convince your clients that this is a good idea to go with cartoon characters who are going to be dying and being 
eaten by bears and stung by wasps. How did you convince the client to say, I think it's a great idea? Yeah, I've been asked that a lot. Um, look, our clients um, are really smart. Uh, it wasn't a brave decision for them, they're just a really smart client. The idea that we had answered the brief and we felt that um, most, of our, most of our target audience is living on YouTube. And if we wanted to talk to them, we had to live in YouTube as well. And to be honest, you know, we're, we're starting to enter an era where when you talk to your audience, you have to be authentic. So if you're going to get online or you're going to talk to a particular audience and you're going to speak at them, they're not going to listen. So what you have to do is come up with something that you think they'd listen to. And, you know, we know when we're being spoken at and when we're actually interested in what someone's saying. So, you know, it wasn't hard to sell. And... Um, and I think that does surprise people, um, but it wasn't. <laughs> Definitely surprised me. And then last question before you run. Why is the Springbok South African rugby team better than the Australian rugby team? Um, I think um, there are many reasons for that. And now I feel put on the spot. Um, oh, uh, probably because um, we're not very good at rugby. Uh, but we try. Come on, you know, we try. We're doing our best. And there's that Aussie rules thing as well, you know. Um, but, yeah, no, we're probably not as good. Aussie rules? Never heard of it. Cool, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks. Cool, thanks, man. Cheers.